I've done it again. It's another one of my before and after videos where I forget to film the before part and I get straight into fixing it and making it look beautiful. So, all you've missed is me sandblasting, which is a grotty thing to watch and takes a long time, so you've missed nothing. Welcome back to Tiny House and Off Grid Resources, the channel where we rebuild, refurbish, repair and recycle instead of replace. It's the beginning of stove season again. Winter's coming on, starting to get chilly at night and people are bringing me their stoves to repair and refurbish and of course I've been making new ones as well. I've got four stoves here from friends of mine that have uh, all come in at the same time which is very handy because I could do all the sandblasting in one go. Now I'm just painting all the parts, making everything look pretty again and then I'll get into doing any small repairs. This one had a horrendous crack in the door but if you look very carefully you can see that it's been repaired. I ground that back from the inside. It's a schooner made in New Zealand, quite a large pot belly stove. This is one of mine, the little stoves that I make, which are a sort of a pot belly replica. This one had a leaky chimney, unfortunately, and got rusty all down the back, so we sandblasted that and gave it a clean. This one belongs to Pat, who's doing the cob house build. It got left out in the garden and was used as a garden ornament after it was removed from a cabin. So the rusting was very deeply pitted, making it look super rustic but it was complete and nothing was broken. So a heavy heavy sandblast to get it back to sound metal and a repaint and this thing is going to go into Julie's Cobb Cottage for a little while until she can find a stove. This one has got a couple of cracks and it's quite worn but we'll get another five years out of it if we have to. And this one belongs to Louise from Harmony Gardens that's missing a couple of parts. We've got the door handle missing and the ash pan lid missing. I'm going to have to make replicas of those. If you look carefully at the right hand rear leg, you'll see that that also is a replica. I've already made that out of a piece of angle iron. Now the big schooner at the front needed a heat shield because it's going to be put into a corner. And they want to push the heat out into the room instead of into the cladding of the building. So I've rolled up a piece of sheet steel and I'm just rounding off the corners. So I've just rounded off the corners with 50 grit and now I'm going to go down to an 80 grit to give them a nice smooth polish and then I'll dust over the entire surface with the 80 grit just to give the paint something to hang on to. Now it's ready for a test fit. I'm bolting it on utilising one of the blinking plugs at the bottom that are blinking up the holes that the wet back is fitted to when these things have a wet back. Just because I don't want to be drilling any more holes in the cast iron because uh, cast iron that's been repeatedly heated and cooled, heated and cooled sometimes gets really hard to drill. So it's bolted at the back and then I've made these stabilizing tabs and riveted those on to the bottom. They're made of a thin sheet steel and what I'm going to do is rock the stove over because it's made in three sections. I'm going to push the top section over, trap that tab in the seam and then go around the other side and do the same thing. 
then I'll push down and that will imprint the um, shape of that bottom seam into the tab and that means that it'll um, have a fairly gas tight fit. When we get this to the house I'll be sealing these three rings up with um, stove cement and that'll make it gas tight and this heat shield will be nice and secure and it will belt the heat out into the room in the morning I'll paint that with some uh, heat proof stove black and we'll call that another job done Now here's a prime example of why gas cylinders get tested every 10 years and taken out of service if they're dangerous. The rust and pitting on this one is really, really deep. It's almost through the other side of the metal. The metal's an eighth of an inch, 3.2 millimeters thick. That is at least two and a half millimeters deep that pit there and this one over here is about the same often gas bottles got get left out in the rain on the ground and the foot ring and around the foot ring gets rusty here we go we've got some bad pitting here once again that's that's almost through there and there in fact let me see if I can find something sharp and I'll give it a whack and I bet you I can go through it. There we go. Punctured. Easy as that. And this top one certainly will be the same way. There you go. Puncture hole. Now these things have got um, over 150 psi in them, a flammable gas. When they expand, they expand to 150 times the volume. Uh, no, it's a hundred. Mm. I might be wrong. It might be 150 times the volume times atmospheric pressure, which is 14.2 pounds per square inch. So um, the fireball from a burning gas bottle is huge. Don't do it at home. Um, well, at least don't do it in the house. Do it outside on the lawn. <laughs> 